Yes. Veron? Veron. Okay, Lashon Hara. So we started talking about the few halachot of Lashon Hara last week. We said the difference of Moti Shemra. A person who makes up something and just says, oh, that's something not true, but something which is true. So and so did this. This is what I heard. This is what he used to do. Anything negative that is included in Lashon Hara. And we said, we said that somebody who listens to Lashon Hara is in a way worse than the person saying Lashon Hara because he is enabling him. You need two people to have a conversation. The person can't say Lashon Hara to himself. So if you're listening, then you're encouraging that person to say. That, that is that we're talking about direct Lashon Hara. When you say something specifically about him, you know, he used to be like, now he's a good person, but you know what he used to be? Ah, I'll tell you, let me tell you. And then that gossip comes out. Now, why do you say that? Uh, it doesn't, no to it. That is Lashon Hara. But there's something which is called Avak Lashon Hara. What does that mean? What is that? Avak Lashon Hara. The dust of Lashon Hara? Exactly. Dust of Lashon Hara. I always mean dust. Now, when you. The knock on effects. The knock on effects. Yeah, it's a side effect. It's something which is not the, the direct uh, Lashon Hara, but it could lead to it. And in some effects, it's also Asur. It's forbidden. And I'm going to give you an example. I'll give you three examples. One example of a, a Bakrashana. Someone says, to you, oh, yeah, don't, don't just, don't talk to me about this guy. Don't even mention his name. You know? Oh, why, why not? Yeah. You don't even know what happened. And when you just say that, that's already leading him on. And you only think it's already bad. Now, you haven't actually said anything bad, but it could come out from, from knowing something bad from that. I don't even want to tell you what happened, and uh, you don't need to talk about it. Now, you already just know from that that something happened and he did something bad. So that you haven't said something bad, so it's not Lashonara, but it is Abak Lashonara. And you want to avoid also saying that. Another example of Abak Lashonara is speaking good about somebody. That could be Abak Lashonara. How can that be? You go to his enemy, you know the guy hates him, you know he can't stand him, and you start talking about him, how good he is. Now, what do you think the guy's going to respond when he hears that? He's going to question him. Yeah. He's going, oh, don't think he's so good because, and then you just led him on. So that's already in the store of if neighbor. Because you know you're just starting up on him. Why are you saying good things about his enemy? <coughs> Don't say it. Even if something good. It's an example when you shouldn't say something even good about other people. When you know it's going to cause him to, to just lash him out. He said, Don't think he's such a tzaddik. Uh, you know what he did to me. And that's already thing. What about saying lashon hara? Just saying it as a joke. Would that be allowed? No, I'm just joking. You know? I don't mean he's a good person, really. He just sometimes, yeah. He's like a little bit of a. Akita, how do you say in English, Akita? Uh, like a probe, just poke. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, it's just a uh, teasing. It's a teaser, yeah, Akita. You know, he's like, yeah, he's not like that usually, yeah. You now you say it as a joke in passing, but it's compared to somebody who, who throws uh, knives as a joke. You know, you're throwing at him that knives. That's what you do. So you should be careful. What about if somebody does, says Lashonara in front of them? Is that allowed? We're all in a shit. And I'm saying in front of Joe, I say it to his face. You know, I'm not upset with it. I don't say it. Now he's not going to say anything back because we're in front of the public, we're in front of people. But it doesn't matter. Lashonara, whether you say it in front of him or you say it not in front of him, it's the same. Now, obviously, you would say different things in front of somebody and behind their back. But even what you'd say in front of them, even if they don't respond, and they just keep quiet out of embarrassment, you've already done your Lashonah. So that's just a few alakhot. Uh, maybe a little bit of Chidushin. What about if, some, if somebody doesn't want to say, you don't want to say Lashonah, but someone makes you say, they force it out of you. You say, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, come on, tell me what happened. Just tell me what it was. Just don't tell me who it was, but tell me where it was. Yeah? And then I work it out by myself. Tell me the first letter of his name, yeah? Don't tell me. 
So even that is not allowed. Even if they force it out of you, and sometimes you can, people can squeeze you out, but you don't want to say it, and then you feel bad, why did I say it? Well, you got to be strong. And in fact, it says here, the Khafiz Chaim, that even if they, they force it out of you, and they, they make you lose money, it's your boss. Your boss tells you, I want to know what happened, right? And you know, it's totally shanagha, and there's no, uh, there's no gain from it at all, right? He just wants to gossip out of you. So whatever he threatens with you is, and this is a big chidush over here. He says, Mutav adam, even if your friend's going to laugh at you. Ah, why are you not telling us? They're all going to make fun of you, all of them, because you didn't tell them the shah. So I have to not be embarrassed and I have to look stupid in front of my friends. But not speaking the shah. Mutav adam, it's better for a person, she karesh hote kol yama, that he'll be called stupid by his friends all his, the days of his life. And don't be rasha for one moment in the eyes of the Creator. And encourage yourself at the time when, they, when they're talking to you. Use all your power and your internal energy. You will be greatly rewarded at the end kit, without any a boundary, no limits. Every second that you just close your mouth, the holy light, no creature and no angel can even fathom the greatness of the world. Just to close your mouth, that's Kedoshim to you. With restraint, hold yourself back. Be Kadosh. What happens if it's your father that asks you? Or it's your rabbi. Rabbi says, tell me, who drove to Shul? Who was that parking on that? Then you have to, you have Can to. Can you rabbi? Can you tell rabbi? Yeah. So you, you have to tell your, your rabbi out of respect. And you're not allowed to... Um, you have to respect your rabbi and your father. However, if they ask you to say something which is Lashonara, and you know that it's uh, in this story, it's going to come to Lashonara. Or even Abak Lashonara says that Khafiz is not allowed to tell it. Unless the rabbi tells you in this situation, you are allowed because it's not Lashonara. Um, let me just explain what that is. When, when is Lashonara permitted? Or when is it allowed? Or when is it necessary? Only, I think only if it's a Kanat Chaim. How, how is it? Oh, so how is it possible? So let me just be very clear about this, not to make a mistake. You're going to ask, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to really to say it. Um, only this, the Shafet Khan gives seven different conditions for it. I don't remember all of them. Said Mamon. No, it's not for Mamun. Even even if it's a even if it's for a child, so to, to tell a shonara for your own child, yeah, you're not allowed. But let's say you want to tell your wife about something your son did or your daughter, and just for chinuch purposes, you want to make sure they're doing the right thing. You can't just tell, tell bad things about your child. Even saying lashonara about a child is lashonara. But when you're speaking to your wife, why are you saying lashonara? You want to make fun of him? You want to be bad about? Him? No, you you are doing it to elit. Toilet means for the, for the benefit. For the benefit, yeah, for the benefit of the child. Um, and also, it makes a different of effects for the future. So, even in such a situation, if someone wants to speak to you about Lashonara, yeah, so how do you stop them? You tell them, listen, is, it, is there any toilet out of what you're telling me now, or you just stop telling me gossip? Stop telling me. So I said, no, it's nothing. Is there any irrelevance for the future? Are you trying to stop me from getting into something? I said, no, it's no relevant for the future and there's nothing to know. So then don't say it. He said, listen, it's important that you know this. So let's say you're trying to do, you own a business and he's a business partner. So he's trying to tell you, warn you about him. So even then, it's only for, for it, if it's toilet for the future and if there's no other way of stopping it and you want to warn him about it, and even then, he's not allowed to believe it. 
You can only be choshesh. Let me explain what that means. You can be cautious because you know there's rumors about this person being being dishonest, but you can't actually believe that he's dishonest. That's what it means. How do you uh, how do you act on something without believing it? You respect him. You don't you don't uh, judge him for it. Okay, obviously you don't repeat it to anybody, but you just be careful because it might be true. You're not you're not definitely true, but it might be true. So you're going to be cautious and careful. But you don't actually believe that he's such a bad person. Man. That's what he does. I'm just going to say one uh, example, uh, especially when inquiries come to Shiduchim. I'm going to end with this salakha. Sometimes you inquire about a person, you know, is he a good person? Is he match for my sister or for my, you know, friend? I want to match them up. Now, what do you say? He, he actually is a very nasty person, gets angry the whole time. Now, now why would you say that? How would you say that in a shidduch? It's, it's for the benefit, it's for the purpose, and it's for the future, and it's a reason for that. So, I would just want to tell you, I once spoke to somebody... I don't know if it was a Rosh Hashiva, but he was one of the person teaching in Yeshiva. And it was just a brilliant the way he did it, very elegantly. We were inquiring about one of uh, a certain boy. It was for one of my, uh, someone in my family, for a girl. And he said to me, tell me what you're looking for. What's important for you? So I made a list of, you know, things which is important for me. You know, a good boy who's, uh, you know, who's calm and he's nice and he's friendly. And I said a few, a list of a few things. And, and he said to me, this is not what you're looking for. That was his one line. It's not what you're looking for. He didn't say anything specifically bad about the person. I don't have anything of that Jack can retell the information. I just know for me, he said, that's not what I'm looking for. And it was just such an elegant, classy way of not saying Lashonara and giving me the information that I need them to pass on. So, you know, if someone asks you, you know, about this guy's business partner, he said, well, what are you looking for? I want someone honest, someone who's trustworthy, someone I know I can rely on, someone who's smart, someone who's qualified, someone who's going to be there on time. So, and you tell him, listen, this guy is, it's not what you're looking for. And you haven't said anything bad. You don't know which one of those he's referring to. And you've just, you've given over information very respectfully. And you've, uh, you've held on to, to stop from from Lashana. That's the, the amazing thing that you can do from it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Ms. Hashem, we'll be back next week on, on Wednesday. Thank you for joining no, us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.